2020 has been an unprecedented year for Oakland and the world. Pandemic, shelter in place, economic shutdown, heat waves, fires, hazardous air, tragic deaths, and enraging racial injustice have challenged our individual well being and communal cohesion in ways we never could have imagined. 2020, it's not just the year, it's a measure of vision. 2020 means clear vision. What has this year, 2020, made us see more clearly? How do we see ourselves as Oaklanders in this moment of history? What kind of future can we see for our beloved town? The State of Oakland 2020 showed how we came together as a community, how we stretched ourselves as public servants to confront Oakland's biggest challenges. The State of Oakland 2020 fills me with grief, with pride, and most of all, with hope. This year reminds me of when I first fell in love with local government. It was 1999 when I just started as a council aide, and one of my first assignments was to help the families living at the Oak Park Apartments. They were suffering from horrific living conditions. Broken windows, backed up toilets that regularly soaked families' carpets with raw sewage, and used needles left where children could pick them up. These courageous refugees were constantly threatened with deportation and eviction if they dared complain. Working with the Oak Park tenants, I saw the power of local government deliver justice to the community. I saw fire inspectors, police officers, city attorneys, and building inspectors work in deep partnership with community. And we didn't stop until we had transformed Oak Park into a safe, healthy, nonprofit owned sanctuary with community gardens and a daycare co-op. 2020 showed how much we rely on the persistence and compassion of the city of Oakland's workers. How grateful we must be for their risks and sacrifices and how they worked with and for this resilient community to confront 2020's toughest challenges, always grounded in racial equity and with grit and grace. Nothing defined 2020 more than the COVID-19 pandemic. To date in Alameda County, 21,621 people have been infected and 426 have died from this insidious disease. We deeply mourn these losses. Many would say COVID first hit Oakland on March 6, when we had to make a moral choice of whether to allow the COVID-infected Grand Princess cruise ship dock on our shores. The world watched closely just days later as the Grand Princess entered the San Francisco Bay, where our community welcomed 3,000 international passengers and crew members who needed our sanctuary. Our act of humanity inspired others. Famed chef Jose Andres brought his World Central Kitchen to Oakland to feed the crew and passengers as they carefully disembarked. Since then, World Central Kitchen has partnered with more than 150 of our most beloved neighborhood restaurants, from Huarachi Azteca to Kingston 11 to Lucas Tap Room keeping these cultural institutions alive and essential workers working while fighting food insecurity. Thanks to our amazing City of Oakland workers, our food bank and community volunteers, we still feed more than 25,000 people each week. 
from our unsheltered residents to homebound seniors, and help provide free groceries at our schools, Head Start centers, and libraries. Speaking of libraries, Oakland's librarians were one of many superstar examples of how City of Oakland workers went above and beyond during this pandemic. Even though the library's doors were closed, they kept serving our communities, especially our children. They launched free online tutoring in multiple languages and a YouTube Storytime series that's been watched more than 10,000 times. Another inspired idea came from our Department of Transportation. Seeing how social distancing orders devastated our social well-being, these city workers acted quickly and creatively. We won national praise for Oakland's slow streets, repurposing our roadways by closing them to through traffic so residents could safely exercise and just spend time outdoors. We also heard the residents who wanted something different, particularly in East Oakland. So we added essential places, rapidly deployed tools to help pedestrians walk more safely across dangerous roads to the food stores and health centers that they rely on. Flex Streets was an amazing team effort, including planning and EWD, who stood up an online permitting system in just 24 hours to help businesses to safely reopen on our sidewalks and streets and help people get back to work safely. We did all this while still breaking Oakland's all-time record for the most miles of roads paved in a year, 26 miles of new, safe, smooth roads. Our dedicated paving crews wouldn't let even a pandemic stop the Great Oakland Pave. COVID also required us to reach out beyond our own city organization, especially to address the glaring racial health disparities. With double the death rate for African Americans and more than six times the infection rate for Latinx Oaklanders. Thanks to the Oakland Fund for Public Innovation and Oakland's tireless city workers, we launched the Oakland COVID Relief Fund to quickly raise and deploy nearly $6 million to help Oakland's hardest hit residents, undocumented workers, struggling tenants, and low income artists and small business owners. We opened the Bay Area's first walk-up testing site in deep East Oakland, envisioned and staffed by the health heroes at Roots Community Health Center. We launched the region's first COVID racial disparities task force. This distinguished group of health leaders brought rapid responses to fight the disproportionate harm to our BIPOC communities, like the Umoja Health and Sandando Juntos mass testing events at Eastmont and in the Fruitvale. We lifted up the work of Oakland Frontline Healers, a powerful network of trusted grassroots community groups, bringing life-saving resources to the communities hardest to reach and most vulnerable to COVID, including African immigrants and Mayan mum speaking laborers. Our efforts were recognized in a national study that found Oakland, California was one of the only cities in the country with better access to COVID testing and resources in our communities of color. There are thousands of stories of extraordinary heroism by our community partners and our incredible city workers. They worked extraordinary hours under stressful and high-risk conditions with exceptional creativity and love. Hundreds voluntarily served as disaster service workers and emergency operations managers, while many, like our public works crews and courageous first responders, left the safety of their homes every day to serve our community. Thank you 
City of Oakland workers. You have our deepest gratitude for all you did and all you sacrificed this year. The pandemic caused a historic economic shutdown that brought our economy to its knees. We saw last year's historic low unemployment rate nearly quadruple. While we had to reconcile a crushing $122 million hit to City of Oakland revenues. Luckily, our critical city services survived, mostly thanks to the rainy day fund we created when I first became mayor. This and other improved practices had finally earned us a coveted AA1 credit rating in February. In May, we convened our first Economic Recovery Council to chart Oakland's economic future with racial equity as our guiding principle. In the words of the council's co-facilitator, Michael McAfee of PolicyLink. Analysis. And so we must center racial equity. Um, that is key. The second is we've got to be common sense sensical and put people first. People are suffering right now and they need capital. They need money in their pockets. And so this is an opportunity for us to reimagine our safety net, our systems of supports for our citizens, folks who live in our community. Thanks to both the rapid response and ongoing work of the Recovery Council, businesses like Kishna's Kitty Corner in East Oakland will survive and stay rooted in Oakland. Kishna's Kitty Corner, we're a 24 hour, seven days a week, child care and transportation program in East Oakland. The grant means everything to us. Um, it has allowed us to keep our full-time employee on staff and um, it's just been a blessing uh, for us and um, also for, for them uh, just to keep, you know, this community thriving through, through, through this crisis. And we should all be so proud of Oakland Undivided, our response to the distance learning mandate that threatened to turn Oakland's digital divide into an insurmountable gulf of educational inequity. Luckily, the nonprofits Tech Exchange and Oakland Public Ed Fund were ready and had already identified 25,000 student households that needed a computer, internet connection, and tech support. We put out the call for help, and boy, did you respond, including one transformational donation of $10 million from tech founder Jack Dorsey. And then the Oakland City Council added $7 million more to stand up free public Wi-Fi. So just as kids were going back to school on a hot August day in East Oakland, we witnessed the pure joy on their faces as we passed out the first of those 25,000 free laptops to help connect families with a whole new world of information and knowledge. Another triumph of town love was the Great Oakland Check-In, an intentional effort to phone 20,000 of our most vulnerable residents with volunteers to check in on their well-being, connect them with resources they might not know about, like free groceries, PPE, and free COVID tests, and to ensure they took the census. Nearly 600 volunteers, including many Oakland librarians, became our army of love. That's where we all met and fell in love with Jack, a 72-year-old blind man living alone who had survived on nothing but peanut butter sandwiches for weeks until he got that call from our volunteer, Jenny. I got involved with the uh, Great Oakland check-in and um, Jack was the very first person who answered the phone. And Jack said, um, I could use some more food. And I said, well, what, are you, what have you been eating? 
and he let me know that he was um, a 72 year old blind man and that he'd been living on peanut butter sandwiches. Said, well, I can help with that. You know, I'm gonna get you signed up um, to get some meals delivered. And then uh, we ended up chatting for about an hour. And I was very limited on my food supplies. And so the, uh, the open um, reaching out to me was just um, the right help at the right time. Oakland is reaching out to the seniors and helping people that need help. I'm one of them and I'm ever so thankful. They still talk twice a week about everything from Shakespeare to eucalyptus trees. Dr. Tony Eiton described the Great Oakland Check-In as one of the most inspiring health responses to COVID he has seen in the nation. And so Oakland has found a way to leverage human relationships, to build the kind of community strength to create defense and resiliency against COVID-19. So I just want to point out that this is not just feel good stuff. This is based on very good science and it's Oakland leading the nation in showing what a strong community can do to prevent uh, COVID-19 from wreaking havoc, havoc amongst vulnerable people. COVID also made our housing and homeless crisis more urgent than ever. In March, the City Council enacted what is now recognized as California's strongest eviction moratorium and augmented the COVID relief funds raised by our community with $5 million in federal CARES funding for rent and mortgage relief. To prevent the risk of an outbreak spreading amongst our unsheltered residents, city workers went into overdrive and managed to create a completely hooked up trailer park from scratch in less than 60 days to bring 180 high risk residents off the streets. And this was in addition to the 623 rooms that Alameda County secured and supported in Oakland hotels through Governor Gavin Newsom's Operation Room Key. Oakland managed to avoid widespread outbreaks in homeless communities that plagued other cities, in part due to our innovative cabin communities, which continue to offer shelter and services in physically distanced outdoor settings. It's been a little more than two and a half years since we first opened our community cabin pilot. And since then, 750 residents have chosen to come indoors and into the cabins. And of those, 55% have moved directly on to more stable and permanent housing. San Francisco's Human Services Director and Shelter Advisor to Governor Newsom, Trent Rohr, has said that Oakland's cabin community model is one of the most promising and cost-effective homeless shelter innovations he's ever seen, with high rates of exits to permanent housing at roughly half the cost of traditional shelter models. Oakland has been able to rapidly deploy this effective intervention that is helping unsheltered residents heal and get housed. This year, Oakland also won an unprecedented $135 million from the state of California that will create 854 new units of deeply affordable housing. And it included a recent award that will let us convert 20 single family homes into shared housing for the formerly homeless. And turn a former CCA dorm into a family shelter and permanent housing for formerly homeless seniors in the upscale neighborhood of Rockridge. This summer, our city saw the undeniable effects of climate change and global warming as our residents woke up to 
orange skies and smoky air. Our city's firefighters expanded their roving patrols along our hillsides while also sending teams of our first responders to help battle the wildfires that burned across our state. In July, the council unanimously voted to adopt the 2030 Equitable Climate Action Plan, or ECAP, as well as a 2045 carbon neutrality goal that will require dramatic reductions to emissions from buildings and transportation. An example of the ECAP in action is the Better Neighborhoods, Same Neighbors initiative recently funded by the highly competitive Transformative Climate Communities Grant. This $28 million will protect East Oakland residents from displacement while improving health and saving the planet. It includes a new affordable housing project right on the BRT with a ground floor health clinic, a three acre nursery that will become one of the largest urban aquaponics farms and food hubs in the U.S. An expanded scraper bike team, bike share with youth development programming, and a greening initiative that will plant 2,000 new trees and create a community trail along San Leandro Creek to connect these East Oakland neighborhoods to the shoreline. This is making environmental justice in our backyard and in our community. We will all remember 2020 as a year of racial reckoning, one that was long overdue. The state-sponsored murder of George Floyd in broad daylight by a white police officer set off a righteous rage across our nation. It was followed by a wave of demands to reform and reimagine public safety and to defund the police. In many ways, Oakland was ready to lead in this moment. For years, Oakland had invested in community-led strategies, like our ceasefire program, which last year earned us national headlines when we cut the number of shootings and murders in half. Now recently, we've seen a heartbreaking resurgence of this violence. Every life lost is a tragedy that rocks our community with grief. We believe Ceasefire will work again because it starts with a community-led call for peace and healing. So this year, the Oakland City Council tripled the budget for our Department of Violence Prevention. And while other cities are just now starting to explore alternatives to police response, Oakland has already completed a year-long study to create MACRO, or Mobile Assistance Community Responders of Oakland. MACRO is an exciting new strategy to dispatch trauma-informed EMTs and mental health experts to nonviolent calls that don't require a badge or a gun. And it will be up and running in the new year. And our work to remove any explicit or implicit racial bias in policing will never stop. We thank Oakland's Police Commission for their incredible leadership in this work. And while we'll always have more work to do, OPD's new trainings and policies show promising trends as OPD continues to dramatically reduce the number of discretionary stops of African Americans, which in turn reduces the real emotional trauma caused by any unjustified police action. We also responded to community calls to defund the police with both immediate budget action and a community-driven process to develop a thoughtful and informed plan to reimagine public safety and invest more in addressing the root causes of crime and conditions of safety. 
Last month, the Oakland City Council launched its Reimagine Public Safety Task Force. This body of dedicated Oakland volunteers who've lived in harm communities, who've been incarcerated, who've worked alongside police, and who've worked on city budgets, will ambitiously reimagine and reconstruct our public safety system. Their work is ultimately the work of healing. That effort at reconciliation was also found in Oakland's downtown this summer, when after the righteous protests and the peaceful demonstrations were gone, vandals struck our city. The destruction they left behind was devastating for our small businesses who were already reeling from the economic shutdown. Oaklanders showed up as Oaklanders always do to help to heal, and to make beauty out of tragedy. Our beloved artists transformed downtown overnight into a living gallery, a miles long place of reflection, of joy, of beautiful courage, of righteous anger, and calls to action. What was once a place of wounds and sorrow was healed with kindness and creativity. Oakland, we love you so much. We love to say that hindsight is always 2020. And while the year 2020 has been full of tragedy and crises, it has also given us the silver linings of compassion and clarity. Clarity that our institutions require immediate and radical change to avoid climate catastrophe, to provide a real safety net, and to stop perpetuating racial and economic disparities and injustice. We cannot afford to look back at this moment in history when it's too late and realize that we didn't learn the lessons of the year 2020. Bold, creative cities like Oakland can and will lead national and statewide change. That's why I recently co-founded Mayors for Medicare for All, a groundswell of local leaders demanding that our next Congress deliver a universal health care system, recognizing that the death, suffering, and disparities of our current system are a moral outrage. That's why I'm also a founding member of Mayors for a Guaranteed Income, a national network advocating for unconditional cash assistance to those most in need. It's the most direct way to attack poverty and economic disparity. Founder Michael Tubbs, the great mayor of Stockton, puts it well. We've launched, and Mayor Schaaf is one of the founding members of the Marriage for Guaranteed Income Network. It comes from a lived reality that A, poverty should not exist in a 21st century civilized society because it is indeed a choice, but not a choice by individuals. It's, it's a policy choice. Um, that two, that a guaranteed income is not the panacea for everything but it is an important tool to fight economic insecurity and to fight racial injustice. And three, that the time has come. As a part of this network, I've committed to launch a guaranteed income pilot in Oakland this year, because everyone deserves to go to bed at night feeling a basic level of financial security, knowing they can keep a roof over their heads and food on the table for themselves and their families. Let's see clearly that policy can end poverty. Let's see clearly that voting matters more than ever. And in the year 2020, equity is on the ballot. Many would say we have a choice to either build back better or make America great again for white supremacy. One choice we've never had before is to vote for a black 
Southeast Asian female vice president born and raised right here in Oakland. Senator Kamala Harris takes every chance she gets to lift up our city as a place where she learned to fight for the people. This November, Californians have particularly big choices. Will we vote for Prop 16 so our public institutions can consider diversity and race in our work to lift up all Californians? Will we vote for Props 17 and 25 to restore the right to vote for parolees and end the unjust money bail system? Or will we backslide into the harsher sentencing and ineffective over-incarceration of Prop 20? Will we vote against Prop 22 and keep new hard-earned rights for our workers? And most important of all, will we vote for schools and communities first, Prop 15, to close a tax loophole that benefits only the biggest corporate owners in order to create billions for public schools and local services at a time when our communities need it the most. So much is at stake at this election. Let's see clearly that we must vote and volunteer like our lives depend on it. Let's see clearly that our health and prosperity depend on equity, which begins with joining together, believing in the potency of inclusion and building from a common bond. Let's see clearly in the year 2020 that it is Oakland's birthright to lead this work.